For everything you need to know about preventing pregnancy and protecting yourself, go to itsyoursexlife.com. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, I'm Fat Sajak, and if that's not the truth, it would be a lie. Today we're back scouring the television and the fashion and the antics of the late early aughts and rediscovering my personal favorite trash TV guilty pleasure teen mom. If you're unaware I am making my way through all of the children turned almost middle-aged women that comprise the casts of Teen Mom uh, and Teen Mom 2 and all things adjacent to that. And this time we are deep diving our big old butts straight into the Midwestern married to your former step-sibling story arc of Caitlin Lowell. Before we get started, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you want to be, which I hope you want to be. Is it something I said? Is it something I did? I don't care. Subscribe. Also make sure to check to see that you are subscribed because <laughs> YouTube, man. <laughs> also make sure your notifications are on so that YouTube can continue to not tell you when I post a video. I do post a lot of community tab posts though, so like if you're ever like, hey, Sajak hasn't uploaded anything in a minute, thank god, um, but you're curious anyway. Also in the description you can find things like where to find me on social media, my Patreon, my channel memberships, uh, Amazon storefront, my merch. Uh, also in my description are ways to help families in Palestine. And there's also a link to register to vote because holy god that election is coming up really fast, Americans. Please vote. Other than that, let's just get on with the video. I also want to um, extend a quick trigger warning. Um, obviously, with Caitlyn, we're going to be talking about adoption a lot. We're going. There's going to be brief mention of things like miscarriage, uh, grief, suicidal ideation, uh, etc. So, just just putting that out there. If you have any particularly sensitive triggers, I will try my damnedest to keep the clips not trigger happy as possible. I don't think that was the right term, but I will try to keep them as brief and as subdued as I can to bring the point across without triggering people. So, But if at the end of the day any of these are serious triggers for you, I would rather you leave. So, Caitlin. Caitlin was the subject of the sixth episode of what was supposed to be the one-off special 16 and Pregnant and later chosen for the original iteration of Teen Mom. She uh, got pregnant in high school by her boyfriend Tyler. It's my boyfriend Tyler. We've been together since seventh grade. You're a little flirt, especially in music class. We used to write notes back to each other. Yeah. Caitlin was a unique case in terms of the 16 and Pregnant girls because she chose to Place her daughter Carly for adoption in probably one of the most uh, heartbreaking episodes of 16 and Pregnant ever. Like you literally, I like, I, it, I, listen, feel how you feel about Caitlin and Tyler, but like, woof. That was, a, that was sad to watch. So they placed their daughter Carly for adoption with the AI bot unit known as Brandon and Teresa. Um, the build up to this, I mean, we've been you know, hearing about y'all for the last few weeks and it's just time to meet, just time to get in front of you and <laughs> say hello. So we're glad to be here. Also, side note, last time I talked about, I just recently talked about Caitlin a bit and I gave a little bit of her history, but I made reference to the rumor that Tyler had basically given Caitlin an ultimatum back then, which was kind of like, baby or me because of some conversations that they'd had on camera that kind of insinuated that. I think keeping the baby would probably ruin us. But Caitlin herself cleared that up just recently so I don't know if those rumors had been firing up again or what but. I wanted to set something straight. Um, I'm seeing the comment a lot that people are saying that Tyler gave me an ultimatum either my baby or him. First off, that comment is absolutely disgusting. 
on so many levels. For one, when you say something like that, it strips me of all of the strength and sorrow that it took me as a birth mom to place my child. Secondly, if you think that I would just give my baby away for a man, that is absolutely untrue. So now you know. So this episode sent me down a really, really crazy rabbit hole. <laughs> Their adoption was facilitated by an agency called Bethany Christian Services, which is very tightly aligned with the DeVos family, apparently, as in Betsy DeVos, as in the former Secretary of Education who probably couldn't pass a basic third grade reading test. I don't think can count without both of her hands. Actually. I learned quite a bit about Bethany Christian Services in my research and um, I'd like to share a little bit about that hellscape with you right now. So I found this Reddit post um, which was a deep dive and it was in one of the Team Mom subreddits and this person, Golden State underscore Thriller, is a real one for all of this research. All I had learned initially was that this particular um, adoption agency, like I said, is tightly knit with the DeVos family. And they had exposed a bunch of children's medical histories. In one article I found it said, the exposed data was stored on PDFs openly available on its website. Some PDFs were called children medical examination records that included the names, dates of birth, the hospital or orphanage they were based in, and extremely sensitive medical information. This includes a child's HIV status, number of teeth, lab test results, and whether the child has any physical deformities. Other information exposed includes a growth report that explains the child's background and motor skills and intellectual development. One notes that a child arrived wearing yellow baby clothes and she was placed in a paper box, and that between the ages of 10 and 12 months she knows her name, can get biscuits, and feeds herself. The charity has multiple connections to the DeVos family. Brian DeVos, a cousin of Betsy DeVos's husband, was a senior vice president at the organization. Maria DeVos has served on Bethany's board and the DeVos Family Foundation has donated more than $6 million to the charity between 1998 and 2016, according to NPR. Bethany Christian Services has been criticized for excluding LGBTQ parents for sending targeted ads to women at Planned Parenthood clinics that encourage them to put their child up for adoption rather than get an abortion and for using the Trump administration's child separation policy on the U.S.-Mexico border to ask for donations. Bethany has placed migrant children with families in the United States as a result of that crisis and has several contracts with federal and state governments. So... It's one of the nation's largest adoption agencies and helps place children for adoption and foster care. It works with vulnerable children in the U.S. as well as refugees and immigrants. And please... Put a pin in that for just a hot second. For legal purposes, I'm not saying any of this is true. I'm literally just reading this subreddit. But if this is all true, wow. So according to this Reddit post, which is backed up with articles linked below, they say that Bethany Christian Services once operated in 15 countries and has 85 offices in the US. They are no longer accredited for international adoptions as of 2021. The cost of a domestic newborn adoption through Bethany is about $25,000. I believe Tyler said it was $50,000, but I'm going to take this person at their word. And they complete around 17,000 adoptions a year. So, I'm not a math whiz or anything, but that's $425 million. Bethany Christian Services is a faith-based organization that does not support abortion or birth control access. Bethany sues birth parents that choose to speak out about negative experiences, including one 17-year-old birth mother that took to social media claiming she was deceived throughout the process, which explains why every time Caitlin and Tyler are asked if they blame Dawn or the adoption agency for the way their adoption has turned out, which we'll get to later. They say no. Dawn never lied about us being able to change the adoption agreement between me and Kate and Brandon and Teresa. And by the way, Caitlin and Tyler are pretty left-leaning individuals, despite the fact that their parents are not. 
Bethany has also been sued by adoptive parents who were lied to about the medical history of their adopted children. One rather compelling example I found was a family that adopted a young child from Russia. Bethany lied about the child's medical history, failing to disclose the child was born with severe fetal alcohol syndrome and would be prone to cognitive and behavioral issues, even after the couple signed paperwork saying they were unable to care for a child with severe special needs. In another case, Bethany covered up that a child they were adopting to a family had suffered extreme sexual abuse and actively worked to hide it from the adoptive parents. So she also links sources to this. I'm gonna link this whole subreddit down below so you guys can go read this, the articles yourself if you want to. Bethany has close ties, including financial, to Betsy DeVos. Through the Trump administration, Bethany Christian Services adopted out migrant children held at the border, some of whom were with their families when detained. And some were as young as three months. That is so fucked up. Bethany was sued by the state of Virginia, lost funding in Pennsylvania, and lost appeals trying to maintain their policy of refusing to adopt to LGBTQ couples. After this, they forcefully ended their policy. So I would encourage you to read these articles. Yikes. <laughs> so obviously, like, this, this person's done their research. There's a lot of articles here. Please feel free to peruse. I will link it below. Um, but the point of this, I wanted to share this because it was, it blew my mind. Like, I know adoption is a very, very, very touchy, complicated, nuanced, fucked up subject. And it affects everyone involved in the process in a different traumatic way, right? Like, every, I feel like nobody comes out of an adoption situation in any of position of adoption whether it's the biological parents placing the child, whether it's the adoptive parents receiving the child, or whether you are the child. Every single person in that situation is going to face a trauma and a different kind of trauma. Yikes! So thanks to creepy predatory social worker turned adoption direct, basically like director of adoption, uh, Dawn, whose Facebook profile pictures look like her and her husband skin people alive and keep them in their basement. Uh, both parties, Caitlin and Tyler and Brandon and Teresa were sold on this like magical adoption. Both parents, both sets of parents were told they were going to get exactly what they wanted. And they were told exactly what they wanted to hear in order to complete this adoption. Because how else can you possibly convince a grown couple who want a closed adoption to agree to an open adoption with children who are giving up their child to them in the hopes of having an open adoption. How you can't, those two things don't match. How do you do that? You're in the driver's seat of your adoption plan. This is gonna look and feel the way that you guys want it to. Mm -hmm. I wanna be able to like, maybe call her if I want to, or send her pictures, or send her Christmas presents, and birthday presents, and um, get pictures of her and stuff. So what, what we would do when we're looking at adoptive families is we look at what's called a profile book, and mm -hmm. it's a book gather that has pictures about, pictures about them, that shows their interests in life, and you have the ability to look through these. So I can send some of these home with you today. All right. Okay. You have to come to the place where you make a decision about what's right for you. Sometimes the most loving thing we can do is to be selfless and let go. Yeah. Anyway, so Caitlin and Tyler were promised an open adoption, and I'm betting Brandon and Teresa were not. Though, during uh, the 16 and Pregnant episode, Caitlin got some sweet jewelry out of the deal with a seemingly hopeful promise for contact in the future. Always in my heart. I have one too. And um, we have one for Carly too. We're just so gonna be linked for life. So, according to Caitlin and Tyler, they're... and. I guess Dawn, creepy crawly skin feelings back. Their open adoption included sending and receiving pictures, sending and receiving letters, and an annual visit with Carly. Now, during this process, Caitlin's mom, April. My mom is pretty unpredictable, and she can be really moody. Who at the time, and currently, um, was uh, very much an alcoholic, um, but at the time was incredibly at least emotionally and verbally abusive toward Caitlyn. I don't know the intricacies of the rest of it. 
Um, but from what we saw on camera, she very often was verbally abusive. She was in a relationship with another volatile addict who just so happened to be Tyler's dad, Butch. Uh, but it's okay, because Caitlin and Tyler were together first, or whatever. I just don't want you to forget that these these two were step-siblings at one point. So Caitlin's mom refused to sign the adoption papers, which meant that they could not hand off their daughter to Brandon and Teresa on hospital grounds because that would be illegal. She, she wasn't gonna sign anything from the start. Okay. Didn't need me to get the adoption going, didn't need me to help pick out the parents, don't need me to sign the papers. But you're, you're feeling like she's just not gonna sign, she's not gonna witness anything. No. Caitlin's naivete towards everything, understandably, and that's not a criticism, like she was a child, um, but her naivete and her deep sadness and pain are absolutely palpable and so heartbreaking to watch, even still. Like she was literally just a kid, like she was literally like a baby having a baby. She was just a kid trying to do the right thing for her kid. But again, at least she got some sweet jewelry when we're linked for life, but I want nothing to do with you. <laughs> and Kate and Tyler did end up getting engaged while they worked through their grief and trauma together. And by worked through, I mean like they just sort of cried a lot and then like their parents would be mad and stuff. A lot of people like have a gripe with the fact that Caitlin planned to keep the baby until like kind of the last minute. I remember her sister or Tyler's sister or one of them was like, don't you understand my mom's going through so much because Caitlin changed her mind last minute and decided to adopt Carly out to Brandon and Teresa, blah, blah, blah. She was a kid. Like, first of all, it's okay to change your mind. Second of all, it's okay to change your mind on something that will alter your life forever. And third of all, shut the f- But anyhow, so they did get, um, I was gonna say divorced. They did get engaged. I remember sobbing at this episode when I saw it the first time, like, live when this was on television because I was just so happy for them because it just seemed like, and maybe this was just MTV editing, but, like, through all the trauma that these two had so sort of made it through as younger kids, to make it to being older kids. It just, it felt very happy. It felt like they, even though they had like their rough times and they were literally just kids, like they had each other. Even though now as adults, like even now as an adult watching, like you look back at Kate and Tyler's story and it's like, mm, this feels like they bonded in a codependent way because of mutual traumas and respective traumas. I also can't get over like the boss baby look for Tyler here in his big suit. Eventually Kate and Tyler would have their first visit with Carly. And I remember sobbing at this episode too because it was just so heartbreaking that these two kids raised in this chaos and trauma made this incredibly mature decision and this incredibly selfless decision to give this child the life she deserved. Now, not everything about these two, like, brace-faced, pimple-popping, match-maiden hillbilly hell has been quite so wholesome. In 2012, an episode of Teen Mom aired where Tyler was disciplining his dog, and in lieu of showing you the clip, I'm gonna just read this tweet. Everyone, I did not beat my dog, lol. Put his nose in it, smacked his ass, and threw him outside. He listens now. Hashtag old school. Hashtag works the best. The early days of hashtags were really something. Hashtag regrets. But my favorite part are the replies. Ha ha ha, people are so uptight. Dog hater dot 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 JK. Are people really getting bent out of shape over that? There's a diff between discipline and beating. Can't believe people thought Tyler Baltiera beat his dog. He did a simple potty training. How else would it work if they didn't get punished? If people have a problem with the way you dealt with it, they can get over it. We have all done it to our dog slash cat. No, we haven't. I do that with my dog. It's not abuse. It's it a lesson learned. No worries. I did the same thing to mine in potty training. It's hashtag old school, but it works and my dog loves me. <laughs> Anyone who has a brain knows you didn't beat your dog. It's called potty training. People need to lighten up smiley face emoticon. That's what you're supposed to do. And then this one's my favorite. 
Are you in college yet? <laughs> First of all, you don't need to beat your dog for them to listen to you. Second of all, you don't need to beat your children in order for them to listen to you. Third of all, no, Tyler was not in college yet. Part of the reason that they chose adoption was because they both wanted to um, go to college and acquire some sort of career so that they could be good providers and good parents one day. And they made promises to Carly that they would do this. Um, and obviously the concept of going to college and getting a good job is, is now an outdated practice because <laughs> as we millennials have learned, <laughs> that's, uh, that's not how the world works anymore, you know? That's why we're all here on YouTube. But I mean, to be fair, right, I can, un I can fully understand how lucrative it must have been for these two kids who grew up poor in chaos and with tons of trauma to be okay with your job being people throwing money at you for filming your life especially when you grew up in just like abject instability a few years later tyler knocked up sister caitlin for realsies for keepsies and nine months later their second child novali was born yes novali just like that movie where the heart is. So Tyler and Caitlin got married and for some reason Teresa wore white to the wedding which feels weird. Can I even get near you? <laughs> <laughs> oh honey, you look stunning. Thanks. But like I said Brandon and Teresa took a weekend off from making their skin suit in the basement to uh, attend Caitlin and Tyler's wedding. Brandon and Teresa also confronted Tyler about posting pictures of Carly. Would it be different if the cameras weren't involved? So say if we did a normal Facebook, would posting pictures, would that be different? We don't really want anyone else posting pictures of our children. And if so I can just well, say- hang on. My question is though, so what's the motivation for doing Dr. Drew and then going on the magazine Lifelines? Like that was putting your picture, you let a camera guy go in your house. We have a platform to speak they were very assertive about requesting that Tyler help maintain Carly's privacy uh, in terms of not sharing information, not sharing photos. They didn't want her filmed anymore, things like that. To which Tyler, of course, said, Where are the bodies, you creepy robot people? No, uh, he said, nah, f that. So he just kind of lashed out about it. And listen, I feel like a big part of where Caitlin and Tyler are now with Brandon and Teresa and Carly, which is they are blocked by them and they haven't seen Carly in a hot minute, is 98% Tyler's fault because he has no respect for their boundaries. He has no respect for their wishes. And when he doesn't get his way, he lashes out at them on social media. And feel however you want about the creepy skin suit people, at the end of the day, they did choose them to raise Carly. They are her parents. And Tyler's, you know, definitely the worst of the two. Like for instance, the time that Caitlin was like, hey, I think I wanna um, do Weight Watchers again to better myself lose some weight and feel good again and then tyler said this what is this what would this be considered i already looked it up you looked chicken it up chicken and cheese quesadilla is seven points it, that's a big quesadilla though like how do we measure that well because it says restaurant style i don't know i just look up the restaurant version oh, of a okay. chicken and cheese quesadilla you know it's your body you do what you want i mean obviously i don't want no heifer for a wife <laughs> but you know i mean tyler i mean honest so there's that. Uh, Caitlin would eventually get pregnant again and have a miscarriage. I also forgot to add a trigger warning for the fact that um, one of Caitlin's producers is named Kurthy. That in and of itself is traumatizing. Kurthy. Kurthy? Kurth. Fucking Kurthy. Are you serious? Oh my god, it's Kurthy. So throughout this time, Caitlin's mental health really suffered. She had PPD after she had Nova. Definitely the miscarriage really messed with her head, uh, struggled a lot with anxiety and suicidal ideation. She went to treatment. Tyler held down the fort, took care of their daughter, 
while Caitlin went to an inpatient facility. When Caitlin came home, she wasn't better. She still had a lot of anxiety. Nothing was better for her. A lot of people felt like this time was her manipulating Tyler into staying with her. I, I feel nothing about that. Your mental health is your mental health. If it's not doing, did I just say health? Am I okay? If you're not doing well, you should be able to rely on your partner to take care of things while you go get help. So Kate goes back to get help. <laughs> she goes back to treatment. Um, Tyler was spearheading this children's clothing company called Tierra Rain. Uh, which would eventually flop because, well. <laughs> so again, Tyler is sort of holding down the fort, taking care of their daughter, taking care of the company, taking care of their house, single parenting it, you know, as it were. Caitlin comes home with a diagnosis of PTSD, panic disorder, and she says trauma. So I'm just gonna say general trauma. And she's going to be seeing an outpatient trauma therapist three times a week. Caitlin has never sort of revealed what's happened in her child, at least like on the show. I don't know if it's in their book or whatever, but um, she's never really revealed what happened in her childhood outside of definitely some sort of CSA, um, which she referenced in Teen Mom the Next Chapter, which is sort of the newest iteration of Teen Mom, which just kind of melded all the seasons, the casts of all the seasons together. Judging by what Butch and April allowed the cameras to capture of them on 16 and Pregnant and Teen Mom, I can't imagine any of it was good. So when she comes back, Tyler decides he wants some sort of separation, not necessarily of their relationship, but he wants to physically separate. They have a new home and Tyler wants to move into that home and they do week on week off with their daughter for 30 days. Because when you have two homes, that's something you can do. Obviously her absence took a huge toll on Nova because that's, of course. During this time, she's also pregnant with their second daughter, uh, I wanna say Ricotta? Beta, like the movie. Eventually they both move into their octagon house that is apparently impossible to resell. Can't imagine why. And then they completely just like neglect to pay their taxes for a long time, I guess. How is that a thing with the teen moms? Like Macy's got a tax lien. Uh, I think Leah had a tax lien. Like why are you guys not paying your taxes? Pay your taxes. What a terrible business model. Like I feel like MTV really set these girls up to fail. Unless they had like a good structured like family, like Chelsea or whatever. Like Kale's lucky she found her way. I mean, maybe it's taking business courses because she became like a she's she's spoken about how she budgets her money and stuff like that and it's it, it's incredible to have to come from a, a home with nothing and I mean literally nothing like she didn't even her mother wasn't even present and then to come up and actually like make incredibly financially responsible decisions 10 out of 10 on that you can't fault kale for that but like where are all these people why why were financial advisors or like accountants not provided to these these people once you started paying them more I guess that's not MTV's responsibility. Never mind. Whatever. Anywho, Caitlin will go on to have one more daughter whose name escapes me. Rhonda? Raya. Like the dating service. Tyler also, at the big pimpin' request of Caitlin, started an OnlyFans, which is weird. I don't think it's weird. I don't think having an OnlyFans is weird. Like, I want to be clear. I have no problem with sex work whatsoever. I have a big problem with where your sex work appears based on what you do. And what I mean by that is Caitlin and Tyler are on a show where they feature their children prominently. They have social media platforms where they feature their children prominently. So if you are gonna post, look at this adorable picture of my children. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Tyler's OnlyFans. That Side by side for me, I have a huge problem with that. Big, big time. I also don't care to see Tyler's dick, which I, 
have now had to get really close to seeing several times on accident and I am not happy about it. So anyway, that's their income in addition to the teen mom money these days. And as I had mentioned recently, Caitlin and Tyler were recently blocked by Brandon and Teresa. They've been calling them out for like a decade on social media for skipping visits, not communicating, etc. Those visits and communication that that twat waffle Dawn promised them and their not so open, open adoption. You're in the driver's seat of your adoption plan. This is gonna look and feel the way that you guys want it to. Also, like, I think one of the most important things to think about in terms of this is not only how this has affected, you know, Caitlin, Tyler, their families, Brandon, Teresa, how about the children? How about Carly, who has sort of been, even though I, I do believe her biological parents care for her deeply, I do feel like she's been used as like this pawn in a way that makes me uncomfortable. Also just the emotional trauma of involving their children as well at a, such a young age with a family who is not enthusiastically open adoption. If they were, they lived close by, if they lived nearby, they came around for multiple visits a year, this was consistent, everybody got along, it was never a struggle, then I could see. But they have just put their three daughters, as well as Carly, in a position where they have to have the instability of never knowing when they're going to see each other again. And that is incredibly confusing and hurtful for these kids. At the end of the day, that affects Carly, it affects Nova, it affects Ricotta, it affects Ravioli, or whatever the hell their names are. It's just, it's a deeply messed up situation that I hope eventually resolves itself with as little trauma on those kids as possible. Now, obviously, Caitlin and Tyler were failed by their families in a huge way. Well, I, you know, while I do believe that they're adults now and they have faults and they, they're responsible for their own decisions as adults, I do think that categorically they were fucked from the beginning. And considering the things they've endured, the things that they have brought upon themselves, I think it's okay to feel compassion for Caitlin and for Tyler, I guess it's interesting how tangentially related they are and how codependent they are because in an episode about Caitlyn, it became an episode about Caitlyn and Tyler. I feel like you can f you can feel compassion and empathy and pain and heartbreak for Caitlyn and understand that the way that Tyler has behaved largely through a lot of this and the way Caitlyn has as well. Um, have greatly impacted a lot of things that could have gone differently. So that's what I've learned. I think I'm done here. Thanks so much for being here. Tell me your thoughts. What are your thoughts about Caitlyn and Tyler? Tell me your favorite. Tell me your favorite. I don't know. I was trying to come up with a prompt there and I've got nothing. Let me know about what you think about anything. Who should be the next mom that we cover? Who do we have left? Macy, Farah. I think Farah's gonna be last before we hit Dr. Drew, okay? And we're gonna fucking hit Dr. Drew right in the face. Um, I'm just kidding, I'm still not threatening Dr. Drew. I think that's it of the original girls. I could go farther. I could do Ashley, I could do... Cheyenne I find very boring and she wasn't even a teen mom. We could even go back to Bristol Palin when they brought her on. We could go to uh, Young and Pregnant we could do Rachel, she'd be fun. She was a hot mess. Rachel or, or Brianna, or Brianna, oh, I still do Brianna. Um, Brianna and Brianna. You know, the possibilities are endless, so let me know which one you wanna see next. I am going to continue this series, and the minute, the minute that season two of Team Mom, the next chapter is up, I'm going to go episode by episode, and that's a promise and a threat at the same time. Okay, that's all I got for today. I am really tired of talking, and my battery uh, died, so I gotta go, okay? I gotta go. I have, a, I have things to do. Okay, bye. to be .org, but what do I know? Big boobs, I guess. <laughs> anyway, 